From Krabby Patties to Patty Mayonnaise, Nickelodeon nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Ray Kashonker, Jessica Clemens. Oh, hi, hi, hi. And we have Caldwell Tanner. Hello, hi, hello. Hello, hi, hello to you too. Uh, well, as I mentioned in the opening, this is indeed a nit 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 Nickelodeon episode, uh, and we have three little cartoon dorks here to talk about Nickelodeon cartoons. Everyone here has played before, so I don't need to explain the rules to you. But in case you don't know what the hell's going on here, this is um actually I have here a stack of statements. These are incorrect statements, but the things you know and love. In this case, Nicktoons. It's up to you to find what is wrong with what I've just said, buzz in and correct me. All your corrections must be preceded with the phrase, um, actually, if you don't, I won't give you the point. Uh, and you can interrupt me whenever you want. That's all there is to it. Do y'all feel ready to play? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Trap, I got the slime that you delivered to my Could house. Be... Uh, it's poised in a bucket right above That's my exactly head. That's exactly what we want. I have the controls here, so yeah. when, you, uh, when the time right. is right, I will slime you. <laughs> Which will, of course, be gross, but then you'll be in the running for best slime moment uh, for the Nickelodeon Kids uh, uh, Kids Choice Awards. Whoa. Lots of things to look forward to there. This is my year. I think you this can is my get year. a, a key got. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that more than anything. <laughs> do they even give the blimp Emmys. anymore? <laughs> I'd love they to don't set up even like this... do blimps. They do just surfboards, I think, now. So you just get a fucking surfboard. <laughs> even better. I'd love to set up like the second tier EGOT that is like a Webby, a Kids Choice Award. A People's uh, but... Choice, VMAs. I got a Kids Teen Choice Awards. I got MTV's Best Kiss at the VMAs. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. Just a, a very very sad best mantle. Kiss. Oh man, it'd be so good to sweep it for best kiss just across all the different yeah. platforms. <laughs> mm. Best kiss when cat kissed dog and cat dog. Yeah. It was permanent, yeah. a permanent kiss, ass to ass kiss. Once again, Reka bringing a weird energy to the cartoon <laughs> episode. <laughs> Last time, the Saturday oh morning cartoons turned God. into the horniest episode we've ever done. <laughs> She's going to win yeah, one way exactly. or another. Well, I don't bring in points. I bring in unhinged, irrelevant energy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead. We'll go to our first statement. Cat Dog was a show about a cat named Cat and a dog named Dog who are conjoined into a single entity. The show is generally unconcerned with the mechanics and origin of such a creature, but in the episode Cat Dog and the Great Parent Mystery, Cat Dog travels to Yonderland, where they find their parents, a cat and dog couple referred to as just mother and father. Um, actually, Trap, Cat yes. Dog's parents are not a cat and a dog. They're like a big furry thing and like a small other type of monster, and they are not at all like a cat and a dog. Uh, you generally have the shape of it. Your specifics are not very specific as being a great big furry thing and some other little it's little like monster. A, it's, a, it's like it's two little it. monsters I... that are not at all related to cats and dogs, and they're found in a cave, and like they came in a big tornado, and then they adopted Cat Dog. <laughs> Rick, I'll give you the point unless Jessica can tell me specifically okay. what, yeah, what the parents it's are. It's a yeti and a frog, and the frog is the yeti. Yeti's nose. Uh, that is correct. It is a Yeti and a frog. <laughs> wow. They say it in the intro of the theme song. They bring it up. Oh. Do they really now? You're right. Yeah, it's oh, it's this one line where it's like no bull eye, three eyed frog or something. Cat dog, and that's like cat dog, they talk that's they bring it into the later on. See, this is great. The only cat dog memory I have is the one where they do show cat dog going to the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> and it's them like crouching behind like a scratching post or something like that. Uh, and they show it off camera, but then like the, everyone's like watching them do it and it's weird and it's stuck in my head forever. Yeah. Uh, and it just blocked out any other memory of the show for me. <laughs> Nicktoons has that way that there's just one embedded scene in everyone's head that it's like, it's never gonna leave. Yeah, and that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. I love that they that uh, they like they do address the question of like it's like oh so cat dog like where where does this come from and their answer just raises more questions than uh, than than you had right. before of like it's like oh um, these are their foster parents uh, not their biological parents uh, and by the way they're a yeti and a frog and no further questions please it feels <laughs> <laughs> it feels kind of like a, a like a big middle finger to everyone who's like. Every every like um actually nerd is like, but how would a cat dog work? Where would a cat dog come from? It's like, that how is about true. this? I think even in the lore of how 
they came to be, it's supposed to be through like ionic fusion. <laughs> so that means they were just a cat and a dog. <laughs> I think we need more showrunners like that today who are just like, fuck you, it's cartoons. <laughs> bring it, truly, bring them back. Reka, you, you, you clearly knew what was going on, but Jessica had more details it's than true. you. Um, Jessica will get that point for that one, but we'll move on to our next statement here. In The Fairly Odd Parents, Timmy Turner's favorite comic book character is the Crimson Chin a superhero voiced by Jay Leno, who lives in Chinneapolis and got his powers after being bitten by a radioactive celebrity. Uh, I will I will take a stab. Sure. Um, actually, he's from Cincinnati? Uh, that is correct. He is not from Cincinnati. He's from Cincinnati. <laughs> As a fellow big chin person, you got to know your facts. You got to know your facts. Yeah. Although, did it seem like uh, you're like, oh, wow, representation. I'm finally seeing myself when he saw the Crimson Chin. <laughs> you know, just growing up, it really meant a lot to me. I beat other kids with my chin. <laughs> <laughs> the logic of Cincinnati and the Crimson Chin, it's, it's like, it's like, oh, you're a chin themed superhero. Like, all right, I, I can get behind that. It's like, but you also live in a mm -hmm. chin themed city. So he's and that actually is independent. normal. Yeah. He's normal. It's like how Batman is from Bat Town. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> mm, where he's <laughs> just called team. Man. <laughs> Look, it's <Exactly>. Man. <laughs> Put up the regular signal. guy. Quickly, to the mobile. Mad out of his window and <laughs> to the mobile. I shall become Man. <laughs> Uh, well, Caldwell, you get that point for identifying that it is not Chinneapolis, it's Chinsinati. This will bring us to our next statement here. Next statement. Invader Zim is an Urkin from planet Urk, here to infiltrate Earth and prepare it for conquest. Most humans are unaware that Zim is an alien, including classmate Keith and teacher Ms. Bitters, but siblings Dib and Gaz Membrane know his secret extraterrestrial origin. Um, actually, Gaz does not know he's an alien, only Dib does. That is incorrect. Gaz hmm. does know that he's an alien. Jessica oh. is buzzed in. Um, actually, Keith does know he's an alien. Keith does not. Okay. What we were looking for is, uh, I say that, uh, the, you know, humans are unaware uh, of that he's an alien, like Keith and Ms. Bitters, but Ms. Bitters is not a she's human. A, yeah, she's an alien! Uh, if she's not even really, like, it's unclear exactly what she is. It's never fully explained what she is, but you do see her canonically oh. have uh, magic powers. Uh, she's uh, She can't go out in the sun. There's something fucked about Ms. Bitters. I, she doesn't never... have feet. She doesn't have, she, like, floats yeah. around. I didn't think she, yeah, I still thought she was a human. I was thinking that and then I was like well he said that they don't know that he's an alien and they don't know he's an alien but she they, is like a snake woman <laughs> yeah uh there's God. she may also have been a fairy princess there's one episode where you get like a glimpse into her past um, part of why that is is she was she's from a previous work by uh Yonan Vasquez uh, uh and she was pulled from his book series Squee where she was the same character's teacher uh so like he's repeatedly used her basically Mm. Yeah, there, you go. Interesting. there you go. Point to point to Michael. Point to Salzburg. Big Ooh. point to Michael. Well, our next statement here, uh, this is our fan question. This is submitted to us by one of our viewers. This comes to us from Funky Monk. Despite joining much later than Doug and Rugrats, Red and Stimpy became a staple of the early Nicktoon lineup. It even featured high-profile celebrity guest vocal appearances such as Frank Zappa, Randy Quaid, Gilbert Gottfried, Rosie O'Donnell, Dom DeLuise, Phil Hartman, Mark Hamill, and Soleil Moon Fry. Rika has buzzed in. Um, actually, wasn't Ren and Stimpy the first Nicktoon and it came out before Doug and Rugrats? Uh, that is close enough. Ren and Stimpy, Rugrats, and Doug all premiered on the yep. same yeah. day. Oh, I yeah. thought Doug uh, was earlier. Wow. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. uh, August 11th, 1991. Uh, those three are the original Nicktoons right there. Everything else, they're correct, though. All those guest appearances. At that point, we'll go to Rika. I do feel like Ren and Stimpy, Rugrats, and Doug could are, not like, be they, more different. Yeah, like it's it, it is like it sort yeah, of like really... sets the like you can see like the evolutionary tree of Nicktoons where it's like these are the three kinds of Nicktoons we're gonna do yeah. and others will all grow out of these Absolutely. three different shows. <laughs> you will either have like mm -hmm. weird fucking proportioned grounded stories like super boring kind of stories or you will have like fucking butts are squeezing out cheeses. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> truly. That's weird to it. Yeah, I would say that Doug is about the ugliness of the soul. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move to our first shiny question here. First shiny question. This is a game we're calling What's Wrong With This Picture? So in just a second, we're gonna show you an image, but something has been changed about it. Something is wrong. First person who can identify what is wrong will get the point. Uh, let's take a look at that image. What's wrong with this picture?
uh, Reika's buzz did. Um, actually, doesn't he have some like weird fucked up no uh, notch underneath his ear? I mean, it's pretty fucked up. In it is eye. fucked up, I... but doesn't it look more fucked up? D did you fill it in? You know, you're close enough. I might give it to you. What we're looking for here is that we've moved um, yes. uh, Mr. Crocker's ear. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see where his ear should be. Yes. <laughs> God damn it! Uh, God. Yeah, the weird fucked up growth on his neck, as you called it, yes. is uh, is actually his ear, which yeah. is like illogically just down on his neck, even though he's got glasses resting on nothing up there. The reason I remembered that, I used to draw a lot of Nicktoons and I did not, I really hated this style of Nicktoon where they look really craggy. And mm. I remember his mm -hmm. ear being a weird notch thing. I hate it. So close to his teeth. Yeah, it's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I can't look at it anymore. This actually, uh, <laughs> this is making me a little sick. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of agree with you. This always drove me crazy too, and I was because it it doesn't look like an it doesn't read as an ear. It looks as like a tumorous mm -hmm. growth growing out of his neck. Can we go back to the other yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, he's hot. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> now that's a fuckable. Now crock that's butt. a crockpot. Yum. <laughs> Wait a minute. If that's one of his ears, is the other one? Is it like two wings? <laughs> two, oh. two like a butterfly like wings on the back of his neck. Oh, that's why he hates fairies because he's got two little fake he wings. He just flaps around, yeah. held up by his neck. He just <laughs> that point goes to Reka, and we will move right along here. Danny Phantom is a ghost with a variety of ghost-themed superpowers, including flight, invisibility, and intangibility. He also has specifically named abilities like Overshadowing, which allows possession of another individual, the Ghost Ray, which is an energy blast from his hands, and the Ghostly Wail, a powerful scream he can use as a sonic weapon. Reka. Um, actually, he's like part ghost, part boy, because he can transform into both. That's correct. He's half ghost. He's not a you ghost. He's is... Danny Phantom, <laughs> not Danny Fenton. <laughs> I was thinking about that too, and Got I was like, you better have said Danny Fenton. <laughs> if you would have said he's a ghost. I will say, if I can... Uh, you can say he's hot, Reka. He's so hot. <laughs> you can say he's hot, Reka. Reka, you're like you're like embodying um like the stereotypes that people have about anime fans, but for Nicktoons, where it's yes. like it's like, are you just watching it for the hot ladies? It's like no. Well, in the dark, Danny Phantom body pillow. <laughs> <laughs> that point will go to Reka for identifying that he is a half ghost. We'll move on to our next statement here. Some benders in Avatar The Last Airbender are able to learn specialized bending techniques, sub-skills of the four bending arts. Waterbenders can learn bloodbending, earthbenders can learn metal bending, firebenders can learn lava bending, and airbenders can learn how to fly. Caldwell has buzzed in. Um, actually, lava bending is a subset of earth bending as well. Uh, it's not even as well. It is a subset of earth bending. Lava bending is, of course, molten earth, so it's not a fire ability. It is an earth power. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. point will go to Caldwell. Exactly. Okay, Caldwell, who is cute? Who is not? Go. I mean, they're all, I mean, like, listen, we'll go into you know, they're all they're all kids, so I'm not oh, going to say anything. But then you know, you get into the Korra era and Bo Lin, a known lava bender, a fucking hunk. You got hunks across the board when you get into Korra. Okay. I buy that. That's I all buy that. Hunks and himbos. <laughs> That'll be like the poll quotes, the, like the episode description on Netflix when you go to watch it. It's like Legend of Korra, like hunks and himbos across the board when you enter <laughs> Korra world. And he's like, oh, all right. <laughs> and this will bring us to our next statement here. Ren and Stimpy was mostly about Ren, a chihuahua, and Stimpy, a manx cat, but it also introduced the world to a wide array of fabulous products, including cheese fist, powdered toast, log, chicken in a drawer, flawed, burger in a can, and dog water. Reka's buzzed in. Um, actually, dog water is not a product. It's just a gag on the show. Uh, I mean, these are all gags on the show, but dog water was a like uh, a commercial mm. type thing. I like, see. This is a thing that you can mm. buy. It's dog mm -hmm. water. I want a burger in a can. That's not my answer. I'm just like thinking about it. I'm like, that's an actual good sure. product. Is it like a slider in a can, you think? Like how big a burger are we talking? Or is it an extra big can? Because <laughs> if it's like a tennis ball uh -huh. tube of Ooh. sliders. I'm um, actually burger in a can. <laughs> it ain't one. Uh, that is correct uh, because. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 
because Caldwell, I'm about that. to make your day. Burger in a can is a real product, not a fake product featured on Red and Stimson. So tell me about the dimensions. Tell me about the circumference of that can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm the winner because now I can go out and purchase one of these fine products. Um, if it goes like a big tuna can type thing, you crack it open and there's a whole ass burger inside. That's that very cartoony. Who made it? When was it made? Burger in a can? I think you can still buy one. <gasps> Whoa! This is worse than the clock here. <laughs> oh, no! Do I have to stick no. my whole hand in there to like? You're gonna cut your hand on the edge Jimmy to get that yeah. out. Yeah. Here it comes. You... I suppose you might be able to upend it. Like you maybe turn it upside down and try to like like shake like, it. Oh like, god! Solid Solid man, the absolute nerve to show me a can <laughs> labeled <laughs> cheeseburger. <Just> <laughs> that looks like a monster. This is a real product that is the closest you can get to a Klasky Shupo drawing. <laughs> it looks like it just came straight out of a sewer. It looks so wet. And you have to cut it into pieces to get it out unless you're like... I think, well, specifically, it's designed for astronauts. So, like, if you're in space, you just kind of poop, and then it just floats out. So glad I get the delicious mm. taste of home with burger <laughs> in a can. <laughs> a burger, just the way I remember it. Mm. Soggy and pale. It's chicken, chicken of the sea and burger of <laughs> outer space. <laughs> can you imagine if you got on a plane and the person next to you took out this can and just, like, cracked it open? Is there any food that isn't like already just like mush, like tuna or whatever, that I would accept someone cracking open out of a can? I mean, like beans. Beans, right? okay. What about like a pot okay. pie? What if someone had a pot pie? If they had a pot pie that had one of those strings at the bottom where you pull it and then it instantly heats it, I feel like I'm cool with that. But if it is just like a pot pie that is like perfectly formed inside <laughs> like a tuna Hold fish but can. When you say a can, string can that heats it, do you mean like on like a like a leaf blower? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> 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 I mean, it's the, the most, same principle. My pot pie is ready. <laughs> <laughs> this exists. They're like ramen that you can buy. It's like self-heat. Ah, uh, just like mom, I used to make. <laughs> the person on the plane's like, I can't get this working. Do you mind taking a time? Yeah. Here, let me do. I have one of those at home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, step aside. You gotta, you gotta hold the clutch down. Yeah. You gotta hold the clutch step down. There you go. Aside, ladies. Step aside, ladies. I'll do this. Listen to that pot pie purr. <laughs> <laughs> that point will go to Jess against all odds. Unbelievable. Uh, well, this will bring us to our second shiny question. Second shiny question here. Uh, and this is a game that we call Legal Limit uh, because we want to play you some music, but we're probably not legally allowed to do so. So we have here, these are theme songs from Nicktoons, uh, but we're only going to play a tiny little sliver for you. you we want to see if you can identify oh, you. what show it's from uh, based on just that little segment. Oh! <laughs> everyone, <laughs> everyone immediately buzzing in, but Jessica was first. That's, Jessica. That's ah. my boy, SpongeBob. Square that's pain. your boy, SpongeBob. Oh, Let's listen to track two. Ooh, everyone is buzzing again, but once again, Jessica has beaten boy, everyone that's else. That's my Rocket ah, Power. Draw. That we is from Rocket Power. On a mission. <laughs> Action, adventure, the one condition. <laughs> That's not, that show is so fucking lame, but I did watch it. I was re-watching it lately. I started watching it, and yeah. it's so fucking good, so do not listen to Rick. <laughs> it's so lame. Wow. I did always have the impression that it was like, this is what someone lame thinks something cool yeah. is. Stop. Like, like, it's Stop. Like, 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 it was insisting too much on how cool it was. I went to school dressed as Reggie all the time. I was like, Mom, I need <laughs> army pants. <laughs> she was like, okay. Let's listen to track number three. This is the theme song. Everyone's buzzing again. Once again, Jessica Shit. beaten everyone. I know the theme song is also so, just very, it's Jimmy Neutron, boy genius. That is Jimmy Neutron, boy genius. Let's listen to track number four. Grass is much oh my gosh. Jessica's as already told by buzzed Ginger. in. That's Macy that Gray, That is as honey. told by it Ginger. Is. That's oh Macy Gray. Jessica's running away with this, being hot on the buzzer. Let's listen to track number five. <laughs> Once again, Jessica Damn. beating everyone. Sorry, that's done, uh, baby. Jess I need to see Jess's internet. No. I need to screen test that real quick, please. <laughs> that was just one do from Doug, but one do is all you need yeah, to recognize true. Doug. Uh, we've only got one more track here. Let's see if uh, Jessica can clean it up. 
That is Reka. Reka is the first. <laughs> that is Angry Beavers. Uh, Reka denying <laughs> Jess the clean sweep. This is the only thing I know. I need a whip. <laughs> no, you are winning. Don't do lie. We all need this win. We have hungry families to feed. Please, I need these points to feed my family. <laughs> Please, Trap, I need the points to feed my family. I've eaten all the food. <laughs> How dare you put in that question, not thinking that we were going to do a bit for that <laughs> canned burger for so long and not reward us with one. <laughs> You're right. I should send the winner a canned burger, whoever it is. Uh, and Rake, I'm sorry if it's you. I don't but we'll want send you, a, yep. you know what? We'll send you a whole pallet. No. <laughs> I'm going to send one to Rake. The cool thing about burger in a can is you know you're eating that either lukewarm or cold. And that's pretty fun. Lukewarm or cold, but you know it's old. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that point will obviously go to Jess. We'll move to our next uh, next statement here. Sometimes animators try to push the envelope and not every joke or episode gets approved. The following are all plans that never made it to air. The last episode of Angry Beavers was a fourth wall breaking episode where the Beavers announced their own cancellation and criticized Nickelodeon's business practices. Rocco's Modern Life had a gag where Heifer gets milked to orgasm by a milking machine and Invader Zim had plans to feature Invader Scooge eating his own skin to survive. Uh, Caldwell. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty sure that episode with Heifer aired. That is correct. Yes. Uh, that episode with Heifer <laughs> did actually air. Uh, that was not a rejected gag. That actually went on the air in Rocco's Modern Life. That's out there. That's out that there. Extant. That is Heifer getting off on an old milking machine. Ooh, uh, <laughs> that's another one that's just stuck deep in there. Another little mind sliver. <laughs> yeah, that one's going to live in the back of your head. That makes sense. It is like a piece of grit in an oyster that my brain has turned over and over and over until a little pearl <laughs> now sits in my brain of heifer getting milked. Now, <laughs> on my deathbed, I will say to my wife and family, <laughs> Heifer got jacked off by the milk machine. <laughs> what did he just say? Those, th that doesn't count as his last words, everyone. We don't need to like, count those as his last words. <laughs> yeah, uh, not much else to say there. Uh, but that, the, those other ones are also true. Uh, there, the, that uh, Angry Beavers episode was the plan. It was this, uh, in fact, you can still listen to the radio play of it online. Wow. Um, where... Oh, God damn it, Michael. <laughs> hey, we've all been there, right? <laughs> which, which part, the cow or just one of the <laughs> a, a specific about this scene too is they, uh, when they when they like wrote this scene, they were kind of writing going like, we're not gonna be able to get away with this. And it initially called for Heifer's eyes to turn, turn into hearts. hearts. Uh, oh. And they basically said like, Eh, if you make them stars, you can do it. Uh, they're like, really? Okay. <laughs> so in the actual scene, his eyes turn into stars instead, but it's still heifer. I would yeah. argue that that's sexier. <laughs> that that is like more telling. Well, that's a point for Caldwell. Uh, I guess we should move on from there. Nicktoons have featured some surprising voice actors over their long history. Red Hot Chili Peppers guitarist Flea voices Donnie on The Wild Thornberries, Busta Rhymes to the voice of Reptar in Rugrats, and both David Bowie and Gene Simmons have voiced minor characters on SpongeBob SquarePants. Reka. Um, actually, Busta Rhymes is the voice of Reptar, but in the Rugrats movies and not in the show. Uh, I didn't really specify one way or another, okay. so uh, that's not, not necessarily a, a correction there. I feel like Flea did not voice Danny on the Wild Thornberries. I feel like maybe you're trying to trip me up here, and it was in fact Anthony Kiedis. <laughs> uh, no, Flea does voice Donnie on the Wild Thornberries. Okay. Um, actually, is is Flea not the guitarist? Is he like a bassist? Flea's the bassist. That is correct. Yes, Flea is the bassist in Red Hot Chili Peppers. Even though, yes, I acknowledge this is a very shitty question to ask. Uh, it's really more of a uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers trivia question. Uh, but I had to throw it in there. That was. Beautifully pedantic, well done. I really hate the Red Hot Chili Peppers because I hate songs about like the <laughs> beach or like the sun. So in my mind, <laughs> in my mind, I was like, is Flea the guitarist? I was like, Rekha, you don't know fucking shit about this band, so don't even. <laughs> I read his fucking <laughs> book <laughs> that came out last year. I heard year. it's good. <laughs> it is a good book. Technically a bass guitar is a guitar, so uh, there's actually no points for any of this. Mm, interesting, interesting. Just, I think I'm, just say that I'm smart. Just say You're I'm smart. You're very smart, Caldwell. You're very very Thank clever. You. You're, clever, you're all the cleverest here. little boy here. Um, <laughs> well, this will bring us to our last shiny question. 
This is a game we're calling Name That Tune. Uh, so we have nine characters from Nicktoons that we're going to show you. Uh, some of them are well known. Some of them are a little bit more obscure. We're going to bring them up one at a time. Uh, have you buzz in and uh, see if you can name that character. So not what they're from, but the specific character's name. Let's take a look at that first tune. Everyone's buzzing in. Jessica, once again, uh, hot on the buzzer. Jessica, uh, hot finger. That is heifer. That is heifer. That is <laughs> heifer. heifer. Whoa, what's that popcorn hiding, heifer? We all know you're real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that episode yeah, where heifer cut that. a hole in the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> you can notice that his tail is pointing straight up. All right, let's take a look at that next character. Who is this? Coldwell is first this time. All right, uh, that's Stoop Kid, I believe. That is Stoop Kid, famous okay. for being afraid to leave his stoop. Afraid to leave of course. Stoop. Uh, let's take a look at that third character. Uh, Reka has buzzed in. Chalky oh. Studebaker. God damn that it. That is Chalky Studebaker. <laughs> Damn, I was like, I can't remember uh, this. Of course, name. Reiko would know. You this think because one. he's cute? I think he's gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is one for each of you so far. Let's take a look at our next character. Who is this? Um. Oh, Caldwell. Is this from a recent Nicktoon? Is this Banana from Pig Goat Banana Cricket? This is Banana from Pig Goat Banana Cricket. Oh, <laughs> I did oh. God. My knowledge of the industry <laughs> pays off as opposed to things I knew as a child. I felt like it was like a weird one for me to try to like put stuff in because it was like, well, I know the ones that I grew up with. And I also know the ones mm -hmm. that um, that my sister, who's like five years younger than me, grew up with that, was like, that I would like watch with her. So like I had this like wide span of Nicktoons. And then it hits this period where it's just like, I went up to college and I wasn't watching cartoons. Yeah. Up to present day what? and it's like i don't really know a lot of these but i bet a lot of our viewers do so i want to be able to include mm -hmm. them but i don't know shit about them this is a, this is a deep cut i feel like this was not on for very long let's take a look at our next character here uh that is reika first that is sam from rocket power that is sam from rocket power uh no extra points i'm just curious do you know sam's full name fuck uh, does it begin with an? Does it be, does Sam it begin fuck. with? An, is it Sam Fuck? Um, it, does it begin with an N? Sam's full name is Sam Dullard, which yes. seems very rude. Yeah. Uh, for for that to be the case, uh, but there he is. I feel like Sam Fuck yeah, is Sam, Sam Fuck. Uh, all right, that is uh, one for Jess, two for Caldwell, two for Reka. Let's take a look at our next two. Oh boy. Oh, uh, that's Mr. Reka. Crumb from Our Real Monsters, the yeah. teacher. Uh, this is not Mr. Crumb. Hmm. This is not Mr. Crumb. Uh, Colwell. Uh, I believe it is. It's not the Grinch, but it sounds a lot <laughs> yeah. like the Grinch. It's like the Frimpster or something like that. <laughs> You're on the right track, but it's not the Frimpster. Is it Minster? It's not Minster, the Frimpster, or the Grinch. Reka, uh, do it's you? It's the, the Munch? Uh, it's not the munch. <laughs> it's we're all so close. I'm just gonna start saying very weird <laughs> words. The the flinger, the flunk. There's some sort of like pretty quality to the name I thought, but it might just be because yeah. of his yeah. shoes being really pretty. His watch his name be like ass. <laughs> his name is Sam Fuck. The the the, the, the grondle, the gron the gronk or something. The gron grumble. Grumble. Reka, you're so oh, gronk. Right. Yes, Reka, it is the grumble. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at our next character uh jess <laughs> that's Susie carmichael that is Susie carmichael yeah oh, i wanted that. to be <laughs> it made me tear up i was like oh if i don't yes. this, I'm gonna be so sad. uh let's take a look at the next one that is jess pearl that is Pearl Crabs. <laughs> uh okay we've got one last character to show let's take a look at this one I did Sorry, not Rekha. the Yay. Yay. That's, Yay. That's, that's, that's Lava Bender from Avatar. <laughs> We're looking for a name. It's not the Lava Bender. Uh, Jess. His name. Is the Grundle. Is, I, I'm so mad that I just forgot. <laughs> I hate this. Give me one second. This is torture. Aang. Aang the uh, last oh, It's him. So it's him as an sweet. adult. Oh, oh <laughs> just like honey on my tongue. Just an absolute <laughs> Oh, my 
Will Caldwell, who is this? That is, of course, Aang's son, Tenzin, voiced by J.K. Simmons. That is Tenzin. Well, uh, shockingly, with nine characters, you each named three of them. So this is a three-way wow. tie, which means uh, I'll give each of you one point for that, which, of course, doesn't change the point spread at all, but you guys all get a nice <laughs> little point to feed your children, your very hungry children. <laughs> Let's listen to this last statement here, which, have, uh, of course, as always, concerns real-life skills. This is no longer about Nicktoons. This is just something about the oh. regular world. Sure, you know who lives in a pineapple under the sea, but do you know how to pick a pineapple at the supermarket? A ripe pineapple will be consistently yellow with as little green as possible, but not yet orange. It should have a very slight give and smell sweet, but not fermented. If your pineapple is still unripe, you should put it in a paper bag to ripen the rest of the way. Reka. Um, actually, to ripen it, you shouldn't put it in a paper bag. Uh, you found what's wrong, but you don't have the correct correction. Uh, so I'll give it to you unless someone can be more precise. Um, actually, I believe you just put it in, like, a dark place as, like, a cupboard or something as opposed to putting it in a plastic bag. A dark place, like, a really depressing, depressive state of mind. Yeah. Make your pineapple watch the film uh, Hereditary. I got something stupid to say. Reka. Um, I actually, a pineapple doesn't fit in a paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> give her the point. I think you should give me the point. Well, Reka, you're getting the point one way or another because you found what was wrong and no one else knew it was okay. right. So we're giving that point. That's that's not what we're looking for, though. What we're looking for is that uh, pineapples generally don't ripen after they're picked. So you should be sure to pick a good one when you're picking one out because that's as good as it's going to get. It's just oh. going to rot from oh. there on out. And to be yeah. clear, unless you're talking about a grocery bag, it's not going to fit in a brown paper bag, like a lunch bag. <laughs> That's so smart. Rake only has little little paper card bags. Like, I have, like, for, for, like, you're talking cards about like a like that. <laughs> sandwich bag for lunch? That's not going to work. Hey, Trap, you better make sure you check that boat before you go on the lake because Rake is poking holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> Great, that means Reka has won this episode uh, with Jess and Caldwell tying for Reka second. Reka finally won. Um, I've never won this godforsaken game. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all did very well. A very good showing all around. Reka, we'll have our producers send you that burger in a can uh, as a reward for winning this episode. You can send that. Um, you can send right, right, send that right to the freaking recycling center. You can recycle that. Uh, because you'll be staying at the recycling center and that's where we can best reach you for mailing. <laughs> packages is what you're saying uh but congratulations to reka for thank winning you. thank God. you all for playing with me and thank you for watching join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on um actually